الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله understanding two very serious forces and types of danger upon the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam will help you to be able to face those threats to your religion and those threats show us in the way or the from amongst the ways the shaitan will come to you and try to destroy you in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan likewise that these threats are also the foundation for extremism as our sheikh sheikh suleiman al-rahili says hafizallah ta'ala qan la shakka anna tatarruf bi anwa'ihi yu'ud al-amrain he said no doubt that extremism in its various types boils down or comes back to two things al amr al awl shahwat amulawatha li fitr al insan he said the first thing is through desires basically filthy desires which appeal to the nature of a person al amr thani the second thing ash-shubahat al-mudlima lil he said the second affair or second way in which evil comes to you is through doubtful things which cover the heart leave the heart in darkness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions fi qulubihim marad about the munafiqun about the hypocrites that in their hearts is a sickness. Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions with regards to these two threats, he mentioned that the shaitan comes through the shubahat and the shahwat. Through the shubahat as we mentioned, which is the doubtful things, this has to do with your aqidah, your creed that the shaitan will come with you with bid'ah and it will be beautified for you. The shaitan will come to you with inhiraf and kufr and it will look good to you. It will come in a way in which you will not be prepared to deal with it unless you have the sword of ilm, unless you have the weapon of knowledge. And as Ibn al-Qayyum mentioned, in, in order to slash away at the shubahat, the doubts, and that can only be done with knowledge. So, if you were to have a discussion and a debate, and we don't encourage debate, but for example, with someone from another faith who wants to cast doubt about Islam, you can only deal with that by the sword of knowledge. Likewise, if an evil innovated takfiri or extremist comes to you with shubahat, doubtful things or comes to you and wants to recruit you for their minhaj, their way you can only deal with that and only be aware of their doubts and how to deal with their doubts without succumbing to their doubts through the sword of ilm, the sword of knowledge then the Shaykh, Shaykh Suleyman al-Rahayli, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned, and he said, وَلِذَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّمَا أَخْشَى عَلَيْكُمْ شَهْوَاتَ الْغَيْءِ فِي بُطُونِكُمْ وَفُرُوجِكُمْ 
ومذلات الهوى فخاف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في زمانه على أمته هذين أمر الأمرين وهما أصول الشر والانهراف beautiful كلام of the sheikh so he said and in this regard so this is the evidence for those two things those two ways the shaitan comes to you he said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said verily I am fearful for you the wicked desires that come to you through your stomach or through your private parts and the misguidance from the desires. Then Sheikh Suleiman Rahili said about this, he said, so the Prophet وسلم, was fearful in his time for his nation, those two affairs, and that those two affairs are the foundation of evil and misguidance. Look at that wisdom. When we look at the problems that we face, as human beings, not just as Muslims. Taking the shahwat first, the wicked desires that distort or cloud or cover the heart. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that they come through two ways, through the stomach and through the private parts. Taking the stomach, for example, how many people around the world in Muslim and non-Muslim society suffer from what? Obesity. Eating. Just excessive eating. Everyone wants, everyone just eats and follows their desires with regards to their stomach. There's no discipline. They eat at the worst places, the worst establishments. They put the worst things into their body. And then they wonder why they feel horrible, depressed and the various sicknesses and why there's an increase in the various sicknesses that we find like cancer various types of cancer that weren't known before uh, various types of <coughs> toxins in the body that cause all kind of ail uh, ailments and sicknesses high blood pressure heart attacks at young ages uh, all, all these kind of sicknesses and that comes through what? through the shahwat in the stomach the second type, which is well known, the shahwat that comes through the private parts. So how many diseases like AIDS and other things often result from, and venereal diseases, from excessiveness, from zina, from the, the spread of, 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 of wickedness and a lack of control over one's private parts and indulging in all the sins related to that and how that affects your intellect it affects your body, your physical, and it affects your heart because it reduces your iman, your faith. Whenever you do these kind of things, any sin, sin reduces faith. Al iman yuzid bi ta'a wa yunqus bi ma'asiyah. That faith, iman, it increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it decreases with sinfulness. So the person who is excessive and doesn't restrain themselves, involved in themselves in masturbation. And of course to accompany masturbation, that means more than likely pornography. Looking at the Muharramat. And all the sicknesses that we know of and don't know of that results just from those, those activities. Just from that. Because the pornography is a sickness for the heart and they even some studies talk about how it changes your your actual brain your computer the way you think of course it's going to change how you look at other people this is shahwat this is desires the second asul the second asul asham as Sheikh Suleiman mentioned, and as was mentioned more importantly in the 
hadith of the Prophet وسلم, had to do with the shubahat. And the Shaykh accurately described it by saying shubahat al mudlima lil qulu. Uh, 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 the doubtfulness which darkens the heart it, 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 it causes the heart to be darkened a sickness because of the shubahat the person who's infected with the disease of takfir of declaring another Muslim to be a disbeliever without the right to do so without the ilm to do so without the conditions the shurut wa mu'ani wa the wabit, without the criterion, without the conditions, and without the looking at the prohibitors, the takfir. This person has a sickness. And more than more often than not, they don't, they're unaware of it. Likewise, Ahna Bidah, they're sick. They're sick from, and their hearts are covered to the extent that they are engaged in Bidah. Because that bid'ah means that they have darkened some of the light of the sunnah. You cannot possibly <clears throat> be practicing the sunnah perfect and at the same time have bid'ah la. One is taking from the other. Bid'ah mixed with the sunnah. Maybe in some areas a person is, involved, is practicing the sunnah, but in others they're practicing bid'ah, not just... Uh, a shortcoming, but they have bid'ah. The bid'ah is covering those aspects uh, of, of the sunnah, and this is uh, an effect, affects your iman, your faith. So shubahat is darkness. And all of these things, both of these two usuls are, are asul of shar, as the sheikh said, and they lead away from the Sirat al-Mustaqeen. And as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned with regards to sinfulness, he said, Al-Ma'asi barid, barid al-Kufr That sinfulness is a means to disbelief. So the more, it, not meaning that when you sin you're a disbeliever, no. But this is the way for example, let's just look at one example. How about the one who involves, they drink alcohol a lot. They know it's haram, they feel bad. After some time, they've done this sin for so long, they begin to rationalize it and justify it and say, well, maybe what I'm doing is not so bad. So they've already taken it from a major sin to a minor sin. After some time, they perhaps might even go to the extent they've made it halal. They say, no, it's, it's permissible. It's permissible. It doesn't harm. I still pray. I still fast. I still do the sadaqah. I, you know, do, I go around the brothers and I go pray in the masjid and I do this and do that. They might even justify it until they believe it's, they've made the unlawful lawful. It's the halal, which is disbelief. So this is one way in which a person can, from going in the wrong direction, obviously the going in the wrong direction is going to get you to the wrong place. It's not going to keep you on the Suratullah Mustaqim. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who practice that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid sinfulness and avoid the shubahat. And may Allah Bless us to be callers to goodness and not callers to evil. And may Allah forgive us of our many sins and bless us this holy month of Ramadan. And bless us all with ilm and nafi rizqan tayyibu amlan muttaqabbilan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.